It's another Manly Monday, and it'll be interesting this Manly Monday because um, I uh, attended a Zoom lecture on research into incels. It was really, really interesting. It was um, uh, hosted by a Canadian university, and it was actually data. And you guys know I om nom 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 data for me. I don't you know, based on my own experiences, based on my own background as a reporter, I know that science reporting, especially behavioral science reporting, is terrible. And so whenever I get actual data on something or the opportunity to talk to people, I take it because I know science reporting is bad. Um, but here, here's the here's real talk on on the whole incel thing, and the reason I'm doing this is because, um, well, to be completely honest, I was about forty percent of the way through the talk, and I was sitting her going, "Holy shit, this sounds like uh, like a feminist, like a radical feminist group." You know, I feel like I'm hanging out with TERFs listening to this stuff. Uh, the similarities. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, that's why Song and I call it Black Pill Feminism, right? Because the, the structures, the, the pseudoscience that people use as an excuse to not try to give up and and to project their own self-loathing onto the opposite sex, um, it felt entirely the same. And that was sort of light bulb goes on and it's like, hey, interesting. Because, you know, I believe that people, groups of people have more in common than they have um separating i mean individuals are very different right and we focus very much on the difference between groups of people like the differences between men and women the differences between the different races you know the difference between uh w s c m's and like everybody else and that's a weird one but i i believe that most people have at their core the same basic common drivers, you know, unless somebody is profoundly disordered and divorced from reality. Uh, most people have the same basic common drivers. They want friends. They want to feel accepted. They want to feel like they have some control over their lives, right? They want to feel validated and loved and safe. And all this other stuff is just a series of myths, of fairy tales, of stories that people tell themselves to explain why their lives are not going the way they are. And there are points of validity there. But does that mean the presentation is the most useful to someone? No. And in the new year, we want to do, um, you know, uh, creative uh, female, uh, woman creative professionals. I'm trying to say woman. And this is where our, our, our structure um of language is such a problem because woman creative professionals just sound so awkward, but I'm trying to avoid male, female to be trans inclusive. Uh, but yeah, the, 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 the woman creative professionals group seminars that we're going to be doing. And then we really want to do work with men. And that's part of the reason I, uh, attended this talk because what, I found what I've seen anecdotally is there's a lot of comments. There's a lot on Twitter. Nobody cares about men. I've got nowhere to talk to. Every time I talk about my feelings, I'm shut down. Okay, well, we have this group. No sign up. And then I do another video. Nobody cares about men. I have nowhere to talk to. I get shut down. Something's happening there's a disconnect and some of the data might be an indication into why. Now that I am not saying that everybody that posts this stuff is an incel, right? Um, so I'll do the Patreon thing. If you like this content 
Help support this channel. Very important. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Uh, or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. I would love to get like big investors or big sponsors or something like that that can just pay for this stuff so that people can attend very low cost. I like to have a small fee. Um... It was something I actually learned from the Something Awful forums. Remember when, when things started hitting the fan and you had to pay 10 bucks? Because if somebody paid 10 bucks, they were less likely to just show up and troll. Yes, I was on the Something Awful forums. Um, but uh, um, I, think, I think an investment in yourself is important. It's, it's that one step. But money's tight, especially with inflation. And so that kind of support helps a lot with people who, because some of the people I've learned the most from are the people who can't afford it. So I know that was a big PBS sales pitch, but let's get into the, the I mean, that was all set up because, um, let's begin at the beginning. Here's the definition of the incels that this talk gave. A person with a persistent difficulty to form sexual or romantic relationships despite their best efforts, wherein they experience psychological distress. This experience of rejection forms a part of their identity such, as, such that they believe they can't form such relationships. Thus, one must self-identify as an incel. And that incel as identity piece is very interesting to me because there's a, I get told off on Twitter uh, about this all the time, but there is a big difference between behavior and identity. A lot of the times they line up, right? Sometimes they don't. The example, uh, the example I'm most familiar with is people who self-identify as lesbians, but occasionally have sex with a man. Not because they're attracted to men or primarily attracted to men. They just sometimes can't be alone and that's what's available. Sounds, sounds counterintuitive, right? Identity is weird that way. Um... And then, you know, when you get into things like gender performance versus gender role versus gender identity, it gets really complicated. But one of the things that came up when this talk about incels is that uh, people on the forums believed, a plurality believed that um, even if you engage the services of a sex worker, therefore you are having sex, you are, you can still be an incel. So the, the definition is not, um, is, is not, <laughs> it's not denotative. I know, and I, I've had this lovely series of chats with, um, one, one client about definitions and specifically identity definitions. And, and we go back and forth cause you know, he wants it to be denotative and I'm like, it's not. When people describe themselves as often connotative or normative, you know, what fits me best as opposed to what fits me exactly. And this poor guy's like, but that doesn't tell me anything. The term is meaningless and tautological. And I, I'm like, yes, yes. So many things about humans don't make sense. And this is why I love this kind of work. I love the parts of humans that don't make sense and understanding why. And what the research so far, and, and they were very clear in this talk, there's a lot of stuff they still don't know for sure, which you would not think based on media reporting, right? There's, there's a lot of stuff. There's just gaps. There's, incels are apparently a very difficult group to engage for the purposes of research. And, and so there's gaps in the knowledge. But what they do know is that what's present in incels consistently is persistent exclusion and rejection, psychological distress, and a self-identification of incel as identity. Now, there's a lot of things that tend to be present, but not. it's not required 
and one of those is a misogynistic attitude. They they did not uh, they did not um, gloss over the fact that there's a lot of misogyny in in incel communities, and that's when I started comparing it to you know radical feminist language because I've I always got the sense with radical feminists that radical feminists have a deep sense of self-loathing and hatred for their sex and gender. And and they're just displacing that onto the world and specifically men. You know, it's not me, it's the patriarchy. Instead of a healthier view where, all right, these historical structures existed. There are still lingering elements of them. That is real. But the purpose of this stuff should be, how do you navigate it? How are we successful in this paradigm as opposed to this mentality that, well, I can't succeed because patriarchy, right? It, it should help us contextualize and deal with our frustrations, not make us feel like there's no hope. And that's where we get into the whole black pilling thing, right? As song and I say black pill feminism, black pilling on incel boards. Um, and apparently, according to this talk, black pilling is much more dominant now than red pilling. Uh, it's, it's the dominant mindset now, which is, which means given up, um, which is not mentally healthy for anybody. So misogynistic attitudes are there and they're widespread and yes, but not essential. The other, the, the thing I found fascinating was the low rate of endorsement of, of radical, like, like the violence. I'm not going to name the names just because I don't, you know, let's not make celebrities out of these guys. Um, but there was a, a, a very low rate of endorsement for people who commit violence based on incel ideologies. One of the things that this talk did was define incel as exclusively and inherently male, which is a change because, you know, the term incel was created by a woman. Um, and we all know Hassan Piker uh, infamously called me a femcel and then denied that had anything to do with my sexuality and uh, or my attractiveness. And on the first one, he might be right based on the data. On the second one, he's wrong. There is a direct correlation to perceptions of attractiveness and the whole incel thing. And, you know, that's that's one thing I have real issues with, with both the right wing and the left wing of political ideology. And people beat up on the left with this a lot. But I do think it's something both sides deserve a little for because the right is like, we're better because we're Christian right? We're Christian. We believe in God. And then they're vicious about identity pieces or people's appearance that have nothing to do with the quality of their ideas, right? And the left does the same thing. Oh, we're enlightened. We don't support patriarchy. We don't support, you know, white norms. And then they call people ugly and this and that and horseshoe, horseshoe, horseshoe right? And this has affected, we knew that this focus on appearance affected young women. There's a ton of data about that. What this incel talk strongly suggested was it's affecting men as well. That the, these, these men, uh, really do believe that physical attractiveness is the quality that, you know, women want. And I know every woman watching right now is like, eh, no matter how many times we show data that no, no matter how many times, you know, dating experts say no, you don't, you know, the most important thing is how you make a woman feel. No, 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 no. the messaging is so strong that looks are the most important thing. And they're, one of the things I said as a gap is whether incels are 
suffering from body dysmorphia, not dysphoria, not the same thing, dysmorphia, the same thing we see in people with anorexia and bulimia. I experienced body dysmorphia as a teenager. It is horrendous. I still get it every so often. Um, it sucks. And, you know, this one slide they showed these guys who you look at them, they're perfectly decent looking guys and they think they're too ugly to get a girlfriend. Again, they don't know. This is a theory that needs to be researched. But, you know, in the the um, other thing that is not required to self-identify as an incel, according to this, was engagement in an online community. And the the, the thing that was interesting, and, and this, again, is consistent with sort of the structures of radical feminism. Um, they see themselves as one of the things I find with these groups that are high tension from the rest of society is that they see society based on a strict social hierarchy and their their specialness the the key to the identity is that they're not just marginalized they are at the bottom you see this in turf ideologies or gender critical ideologies that that women are the most oppressed group in existence and it's just like you can't say that about white women. You just can't. You can't. It's just not true. You know, when say, for instance, it's a cross section, right? Indigenous people get fucked by the world. Indigenous women get fucked over in a different way than than indigenous men, right? It's all these things combined because then you get poverty and education or lack thereof, and then you get all this stuff. It's just not true that women as a whole are the most oppressed group of people in history. It's just not. That's Frederick Engels' brain worms, okay? But it's the same, right? Women are horribly oppressed. Therefore, we have to lash out at men and the world and trans people and this and that because we are oppressed. We are the bottom, right? Incels do the exact same thing. It's the exact same behavior. And I, I do think I would love to see more, more research into whether the misogyny on incel boards is much like the misandry uh, in feminist groups. Is it a sincerely held belief? Is it performative? Is it both? My take on feminist groups is there is a core who sincerely hate men. Far more, you know, radical feminists, especially trans exclusionary radical feminists. Um, they hate themselves and they can't handle that unpleasant feeling. And so they fling it at men. Right. It's amazing how these two groups mirror each other. Um, and, you know, they talked about the in, in incel groups, the, the progression from pessimism to nihilism, the red pill to the black pill. Right. Um, and and, you know, again, the, the misogyny on these boards, I've read these boards. It's whoo, melt your face. Um, and it's the, the dichotomy of seem to hate women. Women are shallow. Women are manipulative. Women only care about this, this, this women are bad. And yet simultaneously putting women up on pedestals as these superior beings who won't give them the time of day, won't one of them like me still want to date them. Right. It seems like these two states cannot exist together because they're, they're inherently contradictory. There's no Venn diagram there that overlaps. And yet we see it. We see it in the language. And um, touching on the violence thing again, the, the interesting reporting was not only do... Um, References to violence make up a relatively small amount of incel forum posts, perhaps because they're moderated. 
Um, the number of boxes in common between uh, traits displayed by or self-reported by incels and traits displayed by people who go on to commit violence, they line up almost too well. Because based on that, you would expect, you know, more than three really serious violent incidents competed, uh, committed by incels, considering there, there are, you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of, of self-identified incels out there. Um, but the groups, one of the things apparently was they asked incels whether they would sexually assault a woman, even if they knew they could get away with it. And they said no. That's obviously big. And oh, we can't believe them. It is what it is. This is the data, right? Um, and incels themselves don't believe their their groups endorse violence. Now that doesn't mean it's so, but the the in group understanding is very important. And and this comes from me, you know, back in the day doing a documentary on hip hop and what. What rap lyrics said to the in-group as opposed to how the out-group interpreted the lyrics. Uh, it's not that the out-group interpretation is totally invalid, but what the intended audience for the content, how they interpret it is obviously should be centered, right? Are Is the people that seek this stuff out, are they responding to particular messages? Are they hearing particular messages? That's very important, right? In terms of outcomes. Now, the most fascinating part of the whole thing was the connection between mental illness, neurodiversity, and self-identification as incel. Again, self-identification. Diagnosed, formerly, formally diagnosed anxiety, depression, and autism was notably higher in incel groups than the U.S. population. Now, that does not mean U.S. adults. That does not mean every person with anxiety, depression, or autism is an incel. Obviously not. We're talking like 18% versus 7%, right? But the rates of self-reported depression, anxiety, and I was very interested in the rate of self-reported autism, uh, which is telling because if, you know, if somebody's got, if somebody's on the spectrum and they're not diagnosed and they don't receive supports, obviously that's going to lead to social deficits, right? When you think about it, it makes sense because I like I don't think these are uh, causative factors. I think this correlates the thing that really jumped out to me in terms of what, what's what's the key here is that to I'm, I'm very hesitant to get into attachment styles because people tend to roll their eyes at this shit including me because we associate it with women breastfeeding their children when they're seven years old, you know. Um, but there's a greater lean, uh, lower attachment security, as they call it, meaning people are constantly afraid the the people in their lives are, are going to ditch them, right? Going to suddenly decide they hate them someday and leave. Um, more anxious and avoidant attachment styles so is the distrust in women the core or is the misogyny a symptom of the anxious and avoidant attachment style right this stuff matters because when it comes to um intervening and helping these people live hap happier more fulfilling lives the root of the issue is key right makes sense apparently based on a survey of incels only a third of them had any friends 
family support, friends support, really low perceived levels. And perceived levels is an important thing there because um, whether someone has support and whether someone feels supported are different things, right? If somebody is incredibly depressed or has off the charts anxiety, that is a barrier. Now, what it could be is the support is not the kind of support a person needs. It's a mismatch between what they're getting and what they need. And that's very real, right? There's also, you know, still um, a lot of lack of understanding of what to do when someone's struggling. Uh, so in cells, you know, no surprise, report a lot of loneliness. And everything here is circling around social supports, right? The more social support a person has, the less likely they are to have negative outcomes. And then there was this really interesting thing that makes a lot of sense. And I have talked before on this channel about how I am not a fan of applying evolutionary psychology to everyday life. I find evolutionary psychology very, very interested in understanding how the brain works and how we get our brains to do what we want them to, not the lizard brain that is making us do dumb shit. What a lot of people do with evolutionary psychology, however, is they use it as predetermined destiny. This is, this is fact and... That's the wrong way to use it. And unfortunately, a lot of evolutionary psychologists themselves uh, do what the talk called scientific blackpilling. Like, well, this is just the way humans are wired. It's hopeless. And there's so much diversity in people and preferences. And we had a whole talk on Twitch last Tuesday about uh, people, a, a large number of people in the chat find vanilla, regular, normal porn really boring. Don't get it, right? But that's what people are supposed to want. No, people don't want it, right? Um, and of course, the evolutionary psychology view emphasizes, oh, women just want resources. They want to attach themselves to a man for a lifestyle. They're shallow, they're exploitative, right? Oh, proof, proof. And then, of course, men have to have high status and wealth and physical hotness and everything like that. And it's just not what anthropological and actual social sciences data show plenty of guys who don't make a lot of money get married have kids have fulfilling relationships in fact the birth rate among people who make less money is higher than the birth rate for people who make more money that's an undeniable statistic right and then we get into the whole body image thing and how and this is what i think i think that and this is where Jonathan Haidt's work, the book, The Righteous Mind, comes into it. Because what The Righteous Mind theorizes is people have this belief, right? But they don't examine it as a belief. It's th this, is, this is just so. I think it, therefore, it is true. And they think they have come to this belief based on logical deduction, but they really haven't. They have this belief, this gut feeling, and then they backfill cherry-picked rationalizations after the fact um, for the belief. So it's, it's instead of, I looked at the data and came to this conclusion, it's, I had this conclusion, let's find data to back it up. We've all seen that, right? And this is where I get into a lot of trouble with people because I'll, I'll have a hypothesis, right? But it's like, okay, this is what I believe right now. If compelling research or compelling data, um, this has been on my head the whole time. That's funny. This is what I use to hold my hair back in the shower. 
Um, if uh, compelling data comes along that disproves a belief I have, I change the belief. I don't reject the data. Now, I have to believe the data has rigor. But one of the things that I know from experiencing body dysmorphia as a teen and still, you know, I have these moments and I have to go squash the brain worms, right? It is real easy because of what we see in the media to attribute everything to looks. So if someone rejects me, it's because I'm ugly. It's it, th There's a wonderful SpongeBob, SpongeBob SquarePants episode where SpongeBob and Patrick eat this like onion and liver paste or something like that. And so they like they have the worst breath and people are all running away from them screaming and they... Um, uh, they think they're ugly. And then at the episode, end of the episode, because everything with SpongeBob has to end happy, it's, we're not ugly, Patrick. We just stink. Yay, we stink. We stink. And it's just like that. If the brain, when we are rejected, when we feel outcast, when things feel unfair and out of our control, it is, it is a human thing to find something to blame. It is better to feel, people would rather feel like it's their fault. And I corrected my statement there. Here's why. But it is, people prefer to feel like something is their fault and they are intrinsically awful than to feel like something is just the chaos of the universe and out of their control. Because most people's minds crave certainty. The goal, what is better for you, is to work on the distress tolerance regarding that uncertainty. And especially if you have a really bad reaction to rejection. That's tough. Because, I mean, I, we talked last week about, you know, the most attractive in the women in the world don't necessarily get a ton of attention because, um, you know, an example from my own life is I had this weird dichotomy when I was in television uh, of my day to day was constantly being put down. You're fat, you're ugly, you're dumb you're obnoxious, you're not good enough. It was a toxic environment, right? But then, you know, and you don't, you don't hear this because it's not right in front of you, right? The audience has this one perception of, oh, she's hot, right? And people are like, oh, that's arrogant. She just referred to herself as hot. That was the fucking character, okay? It was beaded push-up bras, rhinestones, corsets, big hair, big shoes, all the signifiers of hot, you put anybody on TV, somebody's going to find them hot, okay? But that wasn't my day-to-day -day reality. So it just felt so displaced. Oh, there's these two completely diametrically opposed views at the exact same time. And eventually I had to go, these are both perceptions. What is real? Well, what is real is that this is highly subjective. And so you may notice now that when some asshole on social media or something calls me ugly, or, you know, the Hassan thing of, oh, she's a femme cell, which is, let's face it, what Hassan did there is, I, high status male, find you unappealing, woman. Ha, 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 take that. And I just reject that paradigm. You know, who the fuck is he to make that judgment of me? That's nice. Next, not terror. <laughs> and the thing is, Hassan, like, that's the thing. I can't stand the guy. I think he's a horrible person. Is he physically attractive? Sure. But that's the difference between us. He's got very shiny hair, right? Grow that hair, boy. Like, work what you got. It's working for you. It's not going to last forever. You do you, boo. I'm not going to call the guy ugly because he's a bully. 
but we are trained as people to just go for that looks thing, the physical desirability, the thing, the who wants to sleep with you thing. It is just this lizard brain urge. And I think that both these radical feminist groups and these, these incel groups have internalized that. And they are reflections of the sicknesses in our society. Now, what do we do about it? That's the hard thing because the turfs are lost, okay? The, the, they, there have been so many programs and groups and so on and so forth supporting women and giving women resources and helping women rebuild their lives when they have been abused. And they're known, right? The, the men, they're harder to find. The men's supports are there. They're just not called men's shelters, right? They're, they're called homeless shelters. And all those are worse. Many, many women's shelters are not nice places. Okay, they are bare minimum. They are a roof over your head and a cot. Just like a homeless shelter, right? But, and people are like, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to hear it. You're missing the point here. Stop rejecting the message. Just listen. Really listen for a second. Radical feminist groups, tr trans-exclusionary radical feminist groups, feminist groups in general are not seen as dangerous in the mainstream the same way these incel groups are. And labeling these groups dangerous because they are associated with men is not helpful. First of all, because the if if the data bore it out, you know, and I, I was sort of hesitant to say this stuff before I have data. Now we have data. The vast majority of incels are not violent. They don't endorse violence. Boom, we got it. All right, data. Nom, 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 nom. Right? So that's not helpful that stereotype that increases the trust barrier. And you know, one of the things we want to do is bring people away from the turf circles. We want to bring people away from the incel circles. And I could take them making the world a better place. Take, oh, it's better for society. Fuck that. Where I'm at, these are people who are black pilled. They believe misery is the only reliable constant in life. And it isn't. That is a self-fulfilling prophecy. If all it takes for these people to have happier, healthier, more fulfilling lives is socialization, feeling like they have friends, feeling like there are groups where there are understandable rules, where they can succeed. It's that motivation thing, right? A, a feeling of belonging, a feeling of autonomy, a feeling of like a safety or control and the ability to move up. If that's all it takes, is that's the secret sauce. That is simple to do. It's not easy because you have to establish trust. And no matter how much work we do establishing trust, one sensational media blitz on one of these things undoes so much of that stuff. I mean, we saw that with the Johnny Depp, Amber Heard stuff, right? That big media push, Johnny Depp bad, Amber Heard good, even if she lied, women, women setting things back, oh God. I watched people just, they were making progress, they were making progress. No, 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 the world hates me, women suck, women are bad, women are bad, women are manipulative and evil, blah, blah, blah. I just watched the regression. I'm like, I get it. I get it. it it's not, it, it, it's an emotional thing, not facts. And, and if the emotional safety isn't there, you can't get facts into a person's head. You don't address feelings with facts. You address feelings with feelings. You know, and as somebody who works in the media, it is really frustrating how the media gets in the way, but the media gets in the way. And I still believe this is a solvable problem. And it's through community. It's not through other media. Right? It's, it's not. It's not through 
Because I know some people who are just, just put tits and ass back in media. But it's not about tits. It's not about ass. It's not about sex. It's not, it's not, it's not. We keep saying it's about sex. But again, people can have sex with a prostitute and still self-identify as an incel. Right? It's about human connections. It's about feeling accepted. We got to get away from this, this false flag, right? We got to get away from this thing we all think it's about, sex, and focus on what it is about, which is acceptance and connection, validation, right? Because your body does not know the difference between masturbation and sex with another person. It's the psychological element of comfort and togetherness and and non-sexual touch that you get with a partner or more than one partner. That's the truth. Humans are social beings, even somebody profoundly introverted like me. And like I said, we can solve for this problem, but we actually have to use the data and get down to what it's really about and get people believing that Better is, is not just possible, but achievable. If you invest a little bit, you know, understand the rules, follow the rules, do, do the steps, do the work, you can get good results. It is within your power. And that's what we're going to try to do in the new year. You know, we're going to try to do these, we're going to try to do trust building exercises, seminars, podcasts, stuff like that. If you want to sign up for updates, there is a form in the description box uh, that you can sign up for what we're doing in the new year. We're still workshopping and we're still collecting data, which is why I went to this talk in the first place. So help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Patrons help workshop this stuff. Patrons get a chance to put in a lot of feedback. So Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it and really needs that someone to talk to. Uh, coffee.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching. I don't have the, there it is. Thanks for watching Manly Mondays.